Bonjour et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome once again to Coffee Break French. Now, in lesson 27, we're continuing the series of transactional situations. Over the past few lessons, we've been learning words and phrases that you would find useful when you're traveling in a French-speaking country. And lesson 27 is no exception. This time, we're visiting the bank in order to change money or to withdraw money. And you'll be learning useful words and phrases to help you do this. You'll also be covering a number of what we call modal verbs. Je dois, I have to. Je peux, I can. Je veux, I want to. And so on. I hope that you find this lesson useful. Okay, the very first word that we are going to learn this week is the word for money. And that word is l'argent. L'argent. So the word itself is argent. A-R-G-E-N-T. Argent. Argent. Now, if any, if any of you are Latin scholars, then you may well recognize the word for silver in there. Okay, so l'argent is also, in French, the word for silver. And it's basically because money, well, anything that you used to buy could be bought with silver. So l'argent, l'argent is money and silver. And if you want to say some money, you would say de l'argent. De l'argent. Now, we're going to come back to that. What I'd like to do just now is look at three verbs, three different verbs, and each of these will be in the infinitive form. And we're going to do various things with these verbs in this lesson. The first is changer. Changer. And changer means to change. Changer. Changer. Then we've also got the verb retirer. 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 And that word literally means to take something out, so to withdraw when you're talking about money. Retirer. Retirer. Okay, and then the last verb that we're going to look at is signer. Signer. That's spelled S-I-G-N-E-R. Signer. Signer. Okay, now we're going to look at these three words and use them in various contexts and constructions in the course of this lesson. Let's begin with using changer. And we're going to use some of the phrases that we've already learned in other lessons because speaking a language, as we've said so many times before, is all about combining the words and phrases that you know with new words and phrases and extending the range of expression that you have. So let's look at changer, to change, and also the word for money, which was? L'argent. Okay, so some money would be? De l'argent. De l'argent, okay. So I would like... To change some money, please. Anna, can you try and work that one out? Right. <laughs> Je voudrais changer de l'argent, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais changer de l'argent, s'il vous plaît. Très bien. OK. Je voudrais changer de l'argent, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais changer de l'argent, s'il vous plaît. Now, there's another word that we can use, and that is je veux. Je veux. Okay, je veux means I want. Veux comes from vouloir. Voudrais also comes from vouloir, but it's a different tense. Je veux is a straightforward I want. Je veux. Je veux. So, and if I asked you, qu'est-ce que tu veux, what would that mean? Um, what do you want? What do you want? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Je veux... And then you can follow it with an infinitive. So how would you say, I want to change some money? Je veux changer de l'argent. Okay, so again, it's about ex increasing your range of expression. Je voudrais changer de l'argent. Je veux changer de l'argent. Okay, I'm going to add in another one. And that is the one for, I must change some money. Okay, I must change some money. That is, je dois Je dois. Je dois changer de l'argent. Je dois changer de l'argent. Now, I must, je dois. Interestingly, je dois is also translated as I owe. So if I say, for example, je te dois de l'argent, it means I owe you money. Je dois de l'argent. Je dois de l'argent. 
Je te dois de l'argent. Je te dois de l'argent. OK, but then putting it into this other context, je dois changer de l'argent. Je dois changer de l'argent. OK, so we've got three different types of verbs that can come before the infinitive in this case, which is changer. And in a sense, these are all modal verbs. OK, they, are, they don't really work on their own. OK, je veux, what do you want? I want to change some money. Je voudrais, what would you like? I would like to change some money and so on. So we're going to use each of these with an infinitive. And in this case, it was changer, but we're going to try using them with other infinitives. So, Anna, how would you say, I would like to speak French? Je voudrais parler euh, français. Je voudrais parler français. Okay. How would you say, I want to sing a song? Je voudrais chanter un chanson. Uh, careful with that one. First of all, it's une chanson. <laughs> Okay, je voudrais chanter une chanson. But I had asked you, I want to sing a song, not I would like. Okay, je veux chanter une chanson. Je veux chanter une chanson, très bien. Okay, how would you say, I must go to the market? Je dois aller au marché. Très bien. Je dois aller au marché. And you can also say, je dois aller, using the S and following it onto the aller. Je dois aller au marché. Je dois aller au marché. Okay. Now, another modal verb is pouvoir. It means to be able to. So, if someone says, je peux vous aider, what does that mean? Um, can I help you? Yeah. Je peux vous aider. Can I help you? And that's very likely to be the, the, the kind of thing that someone would say to you in the bank. So if I say to you, je peux vous aider, can you tell me, I would like to change some money, please? Uh, je voudrais changer de l'argent, s'il vous plaît. Très bien. Combien voulez-vous changer? What would that mean? Um, how much would you like to... No, do you want to change? Yeah, exactly. How much do you want to change? Equally, I could have said, combien voudriez-vous? which would be the equivalent of voudrais. So if you had said, je voudrais changer, I could say, combien voudriez-vous changer? But if you said, je veux changer, I can say, combien voulez-vous changer? They're pretty much interchangeable. Combien voulez-vous changer? How much do you want to change? So you might want to say something like, je voudrais changer 100 dollars en euros. Je voudrais changer 100 dollars en euros. Très bien. Je voudrais changer, I would like to change, 100 dollars. How much is that? A hundred dollars. Yeah. En euros. And to euros? Exactly. And note that we're using this little word en euros. Je voudrais changer 100 dollars en euros. And that little word en is one of those really tricky words to translate literally because it can mean lots of different things. In this case, it means into. Je voudrais changer 100 dollars. I'd like to change 100 dollars en euros, into euros. Okay, now let's just run through some of the different uh, currencies that we're likely to need. We've got dollar, un dollar. Un dollar. Okay, so a dollar. Un livre. Un livre. Now, that's a word that we've come across before. Uh, what does un livre mean? A book. Yeah, it means a book. But in the situation when talking about money, un livre is a pound, a British pound. Un livre. Un livre. Okay, we've got the French euro. Un euro. Un euro. Okay, and the other common currency that we're likely to be using in a French-speaking country is un franc. Un franc. Un franc. Okay, now the franc, the franc français, was around before the euro in France. It was the franc. And it still exists in Switzerland. So, un franc suisse. Un franc suisse. Okay, so Swiss francs. Now, let's imagine that you wanted to change $500 into Swiss francs. How would you say that? Uh, je voudrais changer... 500 dollars en francs. Très bien, en francs, en francs français. 
of France Suisse, en fait. <laughs> um, what about I would like to change 200 pounds into euros? Je voudrais changer 200 livres en euros. Tout à fait. Now, the other thing that you may have are les chèques de voyage. Les chèques de voyage. What would they be? A traveler's check. Of course. So, uh, you might need to say, je voudrais changer des chèques de voyage. Je voudrais changer des chèques de voyage. So, that's some traveler's checks. Now, it might be worth mentioning here as well. If you wanted to say, I want to change these traveler's checks, then you would use the word C. That's C-E-S. Je voudrais changer ces chèques de voyage. Je voudrais changer ces chèques de voyage. So that's these traveler's checks. In France, in French rather, there are words for this and these. But just like the word for a or the word for the, the word for this changes depending on whether it's feminine, whether it's masculine, whether it starts with a vowel. It's a little bit complicated, so we'll leave it just now. But just know that c'est, that's c-e-s, c'est chèque de voyage means these traveler's checks. Okay, we mentioned earlier another uh, word, another infinitive, and that was retirer. Retirer. Which meant? Uh, to withdraw. Yeah, to withdraw money. So, retirer, I would like to withdraw 200 euros. Je voudrais retirer 200 euros. Je voudrais retirer 200 euros. Okay, what was the other infinitive that we covered earlier on? The verb to sign. Signer. Signer, signer. So, let's imagine the situation where you're withdrawing money or indeed you're changing traveler's checks. Sometimes you have to sign a document or sign a form. In which case, how would you say, where must I sign? Okay, you can work that out from the various things that you know so far. Where must I sign? Où est-ce que je dois signer? Très bien. Où est-ce que je dois signer? Now, there are a couple of versions of that. You could have said, je dois signer où? Slightly informal. Je dois signer où? I have to sign where? Or, où dois-je signer? Where you're using the inversion. Où dois-je signer? Or the most straightforward one, où est-ce que je dois signer? Where do I have to sign? Where must I sign? Où est-ce que je dois signer? Où est-ce que je dois signer? Of course, that question might be completely redundant because the person in the bank might have said to you, signez ici, s'il vous plaît. Signez ici, s'il vous plaît. What would that have meant? I'm signing here, please. Yeah, of course. Now, let's think about something here. It's quite possible that you have to go into a bank to get money, but it's also equally possible that you might use an distributeur. Un distributeur. A distributeur is an automatic cash machine, an ATM or a, a cash hole in the wall type thing. So, un distributeur, but careful because officially you would say un distributeur de billets. Un distributeur de billets. Now, les billets are notes, okay? They're also tickets, okay? Un billet de train, a train ticket. We'll come back to that in another lesson. But Un distributeur de billets is a distributor of notes. Notes in the sense of money. So, un billet, a note. Un billet, try saying that. Un billet. Okay. And also, you have une pièce. Une pièce. Une pièce is a coin. So, getting back to this distributeur. If you just say distributeur, that's the word for a vending machine where you put your money in and get a can of something or chocolate or whatever. So, distributeur de billets makes it absolutely clear that you're looking for a cash machine. So, how would you say, is there a cash machine near here? Est-ce qu'il y a un distributeur de billets près d'ici? Très bien. Est-ce qu'il y a un distributeur de billets près d'ici? Or you could say par ici, par ici. Par ici. Okay, so is there a cash machine near here? Now, one other situation that we do need to cover when we're talking about banks is a situation that happened to me not so long ago in Paris when I couldn't remember the code for a particular card that I was using and I put in the wrong code three times 
and the bank machine, the cash machine, kept my card. So we need to be able to explain in a bank situation that this, the machine has kept a hold of my card. And the most likely way we would say this in French is using the verb avaler. Avaler. Now, avaler doesn't normally have anything to do with banks and money and so on, because avaler means to swallow. So the whole phrase would be le distributeur de billets a avalé ma carte. Le distributeur de billets a avalé ma carte. Just watch billet. Billet. You don't actually pronounce an L sound in there. Les billets. Les billets. Le distributeur de billets. Le distributeur de billets a avalé ma carte. A avalé ma carte. So this a avalé means has swallowed. Le distributeur de billets a avalé ma carte. Le distributeur de billets a avalé ma carte. Now hopefully that won't happen to you, but the thing is now that you know this phrase, if it does happen then you can explain in French and you'll hopefully get your card back very quickly. And that's where we're going to leave things for this week. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench and we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.